All right, before we get started on today's video, um, I lost the last video. Uh, I don't know what happened to the the video. It was it just disappeared between my GoPro, the SD card, and my computer. So a lot of stuff's missing. So I'm gonna go over real quick what I did before we get into today's video. But I went over and checked. Let me grab the part here real quick. I pulled the uh, magneto out and uh, I checked everything, I ohmed it out, everything's fine on it. I had suspected that some wires were broken because in a previous video, several months ago, this whole entire moped fell off of my workbench somehow, probably the cat did it, I don't know. And the whole bottom assembly here was just, was taken apart from the main frame and it was hanging by this wire. And after that, I could not get spark to the spark plug at all. So in the video that's missing, I went through and I pulled this out and I checked everything. I checked my voltage regulator, I checked the rectifier, more on that later, you'll find out. And I checked a whole bunch of stuff with the wiring and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I also had a previous problem where my right rear tail light did not work. And I had checked countless things on that wiring harness. I could not find where the break in the wire was, the short or whatever it was. So I ended up doing what is going to happen in today's video, and we're going to step into that right now. All right, folks, we're back here on the moped. Um, I spent a few hours troubleshooting the electrical system. Ignition coil is good. Magnetos are good. Rectifier is good. The DEI, the electronic condition is good. Everything tests out. I did ohm checks and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I already have a known problem with the ignition coil um, with turn signals, etc. I have another complete wiring harness and I plan to put that in when I do the full restoration later, but I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and put it in right now and that'll hopefully solve everything. It should solve the turn signals and there was one other issue with one of the air lights as well. I couldn't trace out. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started stripping this bike down and get the new uh, wiring harness put in. All right, I got started here. Got a few things disconnected. Uh, these are the wires that come up from the magneto. These bullet connectors have never been apart, I don't think, ever. Uh, this moped was made in 1982, so 42 years old. This plastic is really hard, so I'm using a heat gun on low heat to soften them up so I can get them apart. Right next to a full gas tank, of course. What could go wrong? go all right so this stays the rest of this wiring harness I'm gonna pull through the frame and out up by the uh, the neck of the steering looks like it's ready good all right we're up on the front of the bike now um, I got to take off the top of the uh, console if you will speedometer and all that stuff is up here ignition switch got to take the headlight out all these wires from the main cable wiring harness end up in there so we need to get this opened up Now, 
I don't know if I showed this in another video or not, but I upgraded the headlight to a more modernized version. The old one was the style where you had the, the chrome ring and the, the whole lens, the reflector part, and the bulb were all one unit. Well, they make this new one now that I picked up where you can just change the bulb out without having to replace the whole entire unit. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully I can upgrade this to a uh, LED someday if I can find one that will work. Put this screw in here so I don't lose it. Put this back here so I don't lose where the bulb. There's only one way to go in. That's not it. Is this it? Okay. Pop these connectors apart. Yeah, that's a pretty cool unit. If you got one of these, uh, they're on treatland.com, uh, I think it is. Uh, pretty, pretty big website. It's got a lot of different parts for different mopeds. And that's where I found this. All right, there's a big mess of wires in here. But first, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, everything up here with the ignition switch and speedometer off. And I'll start unplugging things. I take a couple pictures because there's a lot of wires in there and even though I got a schematic it's pretty vague it doesn't have quite all the information I wish I could get speedometer cable that runs off the front tire by the way get that out oh crud I just realized I soldered a bunch of stuff together here because when I bought this unit it was missing all the connectors back to you in a minute. I gotta figure out all these different wirings. I'll show you something. Here's the end of the uh, new wiring harness. You can see one connector that matches. It's that green one up there. And then all these wires right here I soldered together. I can't see it right now. I'll have to dig into it, but they match up to something that comes down in the back of the headlight here. So I'm going to sort that out. And once I get it sorted out, I'll show you what I got going on. All right. We got quite the mess here. Took a while to get it all out of that small hole in the back of the, uh, headlight bucket. But there's a bunch of groups of wires here. This comes down from the high low beam turn signal horn and brake light on the left side so we're going to go ahead and get all these disconnected here okay that's off i'm going to pull this out of here because i want to rewrap all this stuff with electrical tape And kind of get them organized here so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. Put that back there. Now these ones right here, they come down from the right side, the emergency on-off switch, 
brake light and turn signal. Not turn signal? No, just the brake light on off for the uh, right side of the handlebar. These are in a much better condition. They're a lot softer. I don't need to use the heat gun. Definitely gonna clean up all these bullet connectors before I put them back together. Might even put some dielectric grease on them. Okay. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna rewrap this one too. Just kind of in cruddy condition. Alright, let's see. The mystery is these wires up here. I'm feeling some other oddball connections down there. That's all ignition. I don't think that's my issue with the tail light though. These apart. Those apart. Right now I'm just trying to get the whole main harness separated so I can get it all pulled out of here. Here's the horn. Get that off of there. Don't know where that goes yet. Main harness right here. Let's disconnect this green connector that goes to the ignition switch. Looks like all the wires I had to splice, I remember doing that a while back. Uh, go to turn signal indicator, high beam indicator, and probably, yeah, the lights inside the speedometer. Let's go figure out what those all are and see how they match up to the new harness. Get it out of the way. It'll hang out over there for a little bit. Let's get this setting back on here so it's out of the way. Four wires that I spliced, or five, they're right here. This is your ignition, and everything that goes on with that. I don't know where these two wires go. They head down inside of the, oh, they're my front turn signals. They go inside the handlebars, okay. I know what those are. So let's see how this matches up. No blue plug, so the wires going here must be off of the blue plug. Let's see what we got. We got a yellow, gray, mint green, black and white stripe, and then a black. Now I've got my black and white stripe here. I've got my black. There's the mint green one. There's a yellow. Yep, there's a the yellow. And there's the gray. Okay. So, I know where those wires go. They go to this plug. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, and then five wires right there. Okay. I don't have another one of these plugs. So I'll be splicing these into these. So to make this easy, so I get this wire 
harness out of its bike. I'm going to snip these off, leave a little bit of the old color on there so I know what's what. That's okay because I got all this extra white wire up here. So I won't lose any length. I've actually got more than I originally had. Alright, this old choke cable, which I don't need anymore with this particular style of carburetor, I need to take this off. Pull that through as well. Looks like a Phillips head. I'm going to save all these parts just in case I decide to go back to original configuration when I restore it. But I doubt it because parts are so difficult to find that we're probably just going to leave this cable off. All right, there, I got to get that little bugger out of there. Got it. Will that go through there? Probably not. See right there. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Got it. All right, so I can pull that back through the backwards. All right, we're going to interrupt this current production with a little bit of a hint on what's coming up in some new videos that I'm getting ready to start making. Right behind me is a Craftsman commercial uh, 12 by 36 metal lathe. Just picked this up recently. I think you're gonna like what I'm gonna be doing with it and it actually has a little bit to do with a project and a repair I need to do on the moped that's right there back to our current production I just pulled the choke cable out you missed it time to start feeding this old wiring harness through here Got a string attached to it, so I'm going to pull the new one through backwards. Set that aside. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a little bit. string made it successfully that's good there you go guess my fuse didn't have to go through with it but it did leave that for the battery later There's the old thing right there. Hope you caught enough of that. I'm gonna hold on to this. I, I do want to look at it later and kind of run some tests and see what exactly what the problem was, but uh, that's over with. Right now we're gonna get the other one in. Hopefully get this thing running properly. Maybe even to date. I don't know. It'd be nice. All right, on to the next thing. Let's get this wiring harness ready to go. So I forgot there's a wire from the ignition coil that needs to go up through here and uh, 
I forgot to pull a pull string through it. So the one that's going through right now, I reached up there with this hook, hooked the loop down. Now we're gonna run a short one through to there just for the ignition cable. I mean, not ignition cable, the wire for the ignition coil. Let's see how well this works. It's a really small hole, so I can't tie knots. All I can do is hopefully that's tapered enough to get in there. I will tie a knot in the end of the one for the ignition cable so I know which one is what. Together real quick so that it stay out of the way. So that's for just the ignition coil wire. No, I tied the wrong one together, didn't I? I don't think so. Seems like it though. Yep, I mixed them up. Good thing I found that out right now. Okay. This one is for the main harness. Yep. This one right here, I'm gonna cut off a whole bunch shorter so out of my way. This one is for the ignition coil. I need to sharpen my knife. Okay. A little quick knot in here. All right, that's my ignition cable. So the long one is for the main wiring harness. But I need to get that thing wrapped up real quick with. Uh, electrical tape and get it cleaned up. It's got a lot of oil and grease on it, so I'm going to wipe it down with some alcohol and uh, wrap it up with electrical tape and then I'll come back to you in just a second. All right, got my wiring harness all wrapped up nice and neat. I got my string on one end, tied off. Everything's kind of tapered here, so we'll hopefully go through here without too many issues. And we're going to go ahead and feed it through. Let's see how much fun we can have today. This might be frustrating. What's really strange is back here around the big hole in the frame, there's a big rubber grommet and there's nothing up here. Never has been. I might do something about that when I restore this scooter. Through here. past the fuel lines that are back here. Let's find out. Oh, look at that, that was easy. We're through. Okay, it's pretty good. All right. A 
second. Now, we gotta get all this stuff sorted up here, back inside the back side of the headlights bucket. And then I gotta reconnect all these wires. I don't have any connectors right now, so I'm just gonna solder them. Uh, that was through the blue cable, those five wires. Everything else is you just plug in. I am gonna pull this back a little bit. I'm gonna wrap this up right here. This is in much better condition than the old one. Here, I'll show you the old one. As you can see, wrong end. It doesn't exist anymore. Because it cracked and fell apart and, well, just not there anymore. And that was probably a lot to do with age obviously, and I think a lot of sunlight. This one is still very pliable. I think I'm gonna wrap it up with electrical tape just to get a little extra protection because I am gonna ride this scooter moped and it's gonna see some sunlight. So I'm gonna wrap that up really quick just for a little added protection. Now when I go to restore this, I might just replace it with something really modern We'll see what I can find. For right now, electrical tape will do the trick. Okay, that should do that. Let's turn this back into its orientation right about there. I'm gonna go ahead and set up for um, the fun part. Getting these wires soldered together, heat shrink and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna do that and you'll see that in about one second. I got things pretty much set up here to uh, get these wires from this blue connector soldered into these extensions I put on last year sometime. Um, how I solder is different from how a lot of people solder. I have all the normal stuff. I have a small soldering iron. I also have a weller, 300 watt. I get out of here. Soldering gun. It's a weller, industrial, 300, 200 watts works great. But what I'm about to do, it doesn't work great. And I have found accidentally that a little butane torch works perfect. You get a lot of heat really quick in a small area. You can get a small wire soldered up real quick without causing any crazy stuff. The other thing I use is I use this marine heat shrink uh, from Harbor Freight. Um, I like this the marine stuff because it's got like a hot melt glue inside that seals everything up And you don't have to worry about condensation or water or anything getting to your connection and causing corrosion. These are cheap um, 42 pieces. I think they're six bucks Pretty sure they're about six bucks This one's got twice as much in there because I combined two of these packages into one, but this is what I'm going to use and Got some regular lead free solder some flux, got my wire strippers ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and get started on it right now. All right, let's get started here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip off these wires off the blue plug since they're so difficult to find and try not to bump the camera. Here's an interesting thing. 
I don't remember making this repair down here. I remember last year I tied in the, the new console with these wires. I'm kind of thinking if I did it, it was a good number of years ago, probably back in 2004, 2005, but I did a worse job back then. I've learned a few things since then. So we're going to start with Let's start with the black wire. That one right there. Let's go ahead and get this stripped off. Not doing very much. About a half inch, maybe five eighths. Now where's my solid black wire this is my solid black wire snip that right there go ahead and trim off about the same half inch to five eighths now we're going to take a piece of my heat shrink we're going to slide it over this white wire just like so get it up there out of the way and we're going to join up these two wires right here. That's dropping down a little bit, so let me get the camera adjusted a little bit. first a little bit of flux out of my really gunky flux can and we're gonna get some of that on here don't need a whole lot just a little bit enough to get things cleaned up hit that with just a smallest amount of heat there we go grab my solder That's it. Done. I love this little torch. Alright, now we're going to slide. Where's the paper towel? Get some of that flux residue off there. Slide this uh, heat shrink down. We're going to cover that connection up. And we're going to shrink it. You can use a heat gun for this. I do quite a bit use a heat gun, but this little torch does the same trick. I go, you're supposed to start from the middle and work your way out. That's kind of sort of what I do, but I go until I get a little bit of that hot melt glue oozing out of each end. Then I know it's all sealed up. All right, that one's done. We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of them, rest of them done. Black and white next. Here's my black and white one. Pull this out of this snarl here. Snip her off. Another half inch to five eighths. Grab my heat shrink. that out of the way get these twisted together nothing too fancy here since I'm soldering it the 
the flux, a little bit of heat, clean her up, and we'll put a little bit of solder on there. Done. Just like that. Heat shrink is next. Right about so. Shrink her down. There's a little bit better example of working from the middle to the outside. That's that. Two wires done. Let's go with mint green next. That would be this one right here. Next is heat shrink. Two wires, twist them together. Just a touch of solder. See how fast this is? Extremely efficient. Get my heat shrink down over that. Let's go with gray next. That would be this one right here. Flux. A little bit of heat. That'll clean her up. All right, yellow is the last one.
we go. Let that cool off. I'll bring you back in a couple seconds and we'll get all tucked back up inside the console and the headlight bucket and get everything plugged back in. I wrapped these up too, by the way, off camera. They were looking a little ganky, so got that taken care of. Let's see if we can get all these wires stuffed back into where they're supposed to go. So, let's bring this over here with all these extra wires. This green wire is supposed to go up inside. I probably shouldn't do that next. This wire comes from the high-low beam, turn signals, and brakes. And they got to go down through this slot, through the bottom of here, into the headlight tub. So let's go ahead and get those through there. And then another wire from the other side. That one's just the emergency shutoff and brake lights, I think. So that's got to go through there. These are front turn signals. They got to go into the headlight bucket. Let's put them under here for right now. And then get this green plug, which is for the ignition switch, shoved up up in here. I think I'm going to go ahead and connect that right now kind of hold things in place. Not too worried about all these extra white wires. I got places to put them. But we'll connect these two green plugs together. I know you can't see them, but I'm gonna hook them up. Kind of hold everything where it needs to be. Okay, so. All of this right here needs to go through that little hole into the headlight bucket. Wish me luck. Let's see if we can get her in there. So if some of you guys are watching this because nobody else makes videos in these FA-50s, this detailed go ahead and hit that like button drop a comment let me know what else you want to see there is a lot more work i want to do on this moped uh, besides just getting it running i'd like to drive it around this summer and then this next winter completely tear it down and restore it i was also actually thinking that i've, I've made a couple wiring harnesses in the past that I might just, <coughs> excuse me, go get a bunch of coils of all the right colored wires and connectors. And when I restore it, just make my own brand new wiring harness for this thing. And then I know I'll be good to go. Well, this yellow plug might be a pickle. I've already got a whole mess of wires going through this hole. It'll fit. Barely. It'll fit. Gotcha. Okay. There's another set of wires I forgot. He's got to go in there too. Get in there. Go to your home. That's supposed to go there. Boy, they sure do design these to make it. a lot of stuff go in a small place. And I thought front wheel drive cars were bad. All right, 
I got some bolts here to hold the headlamp bucket on. Got a special nut for on the back side. I guess that helps with adjusting your headlight angle. We'll just get these loosely connected for right now. On the back side of this one is where. Huh. Where is the ground wire? I know it's this black and white one. And the other one it had a. The other harness had a. What do you call it? A connector to go on this bolt. I guess I'm going to have to sort that out in a second. Right now I'm just going to get this hardware in here. back in a second once I figure out the ground wire and get all these things connected up onto the right colored wires can't get a camera in there it's too small so give me a second all right I got everything hooked up in here inside the headlight bucket hopefully all those connections are good that's the uh, turn signal relay headlight will get hooked up to these wires right here I did find the ground uh, it was just a little pigtail that was on the other one uh, everything back here hooking up is just plug and play. It all just plugs in. There's nothing fancy going on. But you're all going to have to find out about that in the next video. I'm going to get it all hooked up and uh, we'll do the test and see if we got a spark at the ignition and at the spark plug and see if my right rear tail light works again. So, anyway, thanks for sticking around. Please subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you on the next video.